my friend Devin Sring. Krista and I have known Devin and Vicky for, gosh, decades. What great people. They have led up our prayer team here at Grace. They have led Bible studies for us. And today, Devin is gonna preach his first sermon here at Grace Community Church. You're gonna hear an amazing, wonderful story about what God has done. And then Devin's gonna tell us briefly about a brand new program that we're gonna do here at Grace Community Church. You know, people wanna go deeper in their faith, which I mentioned just a few moments ago. And so if you want to, and here's the elements that are so important for somebody who just really wants to go deeper in their faith, education, and then you need somebody to walk alongside of you, and then you need to dip your toes in the water, kind of like the Israelites crossing the Jordan. The priests first had to put their toes in the water before the water parted. And this is what Devin is going to bring. He has just completed his own educational program. He wants to help bring about that here at Grace. He wants to walk alongside of people who want to go deeper in ministry. And then he's gonna create opportunities for you to dip your toes in the water. So you're gonna hear an amazing story about what God has done in Devin's life, and then you're gonna hear about this opportunity at Grace for you to go deeper in your faith. So I am thrilled today to introduce Devin Serene, who is gonna bring the message. I'm here today to talk to you about my story, a story of a young man that came to the United States of America to study as a Hindu and how God met him and transformed his life completely. I'm an ordinary man in whose life God has done extraordinary things through Jesus Christ, the Lord. I came to the United States about 44 years ago. And when I came, I brought with me in my suitcase idols that were carved out of stone and wood. And those were to me the images of God that I prayed to and worshiped and sacrificed before. There were many, many gods and goddesses that were worshiped of uh, the general understanding was that all ways lead to one God and the God of the Christians is Jesus and the God of the Hindus are many and the God of the Buddhists is Buddha and so on. I grew up in a very loving family. It was my father and mother and two younger brothers. My dad worked. My mom stayed home and we kids basically went to school, ate, studied, and played. That was our life. What did I know about Christ? I, uh, I attended a Christian school, an Anglican school, and but Christ was never mentioned. God was mentioned. The All I knew about Christ when I came to this country was that he was a God of the Christians, and that he had something to do with little lambs, and that he died on the cross. That's all I knew about Jesus Christ. I was always curious to know how Christians worship and what church was all about. When I was invited to go to church, I would listen to the preacher preach, and I liked everything that they said. I agreed everything was uh, with very good moral values, and I liked that. It went along exactly with what I had been taught growing up. However, there was one little problem. Whenever the name of Jesus Christ was mentioned, since I was committed to the God that I was following, that I had brought with me from India when I came to the United States, I would silently substitute the name of Jesus Christ with the name of that God. I felt the commitment to that God. I applied for a job at a small Christian hospital where they hired me in a management position. The, uh, my bosses, the associate administrator as well as the hospital administrator were wonderful people. 
And what I did not know at that time, uh, that they were, as one would call, born-again Christians. In other words, they were Christians that were, that were like, real true to what the Bible says. And it was not too many weeks later, while working at that hospital, that I began to have a hunger and a thirst to know God more. I asked my boss, who was also like a wonderful, loving father, I asked him, I said, do you have something real simple for me to read about Christianity? And he said, yes. And he reached back in his bookcase and gave me a copy of a paraphrased New Testament and asked if he could pray with me, as a good Hindu would do, which is what I was at that time. I said yes to prayer. He prayed and he asked God to show me the way. That's all he prayed for that I remember. As I started to read the New Testament, I was fascinated by it. I was glued to it, and I would read it basically all waking hours. And I was wondering why no one had ever shared with me the New Testament. As I began to read, faith began to arise in my heart. And I would read scriptures such as Jesus saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to God the Father but by me. John 14, 6. Except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. John 3, 3. Do not let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. John 14, 1. The person who has my commandments and keep them, keeps them is the one who really loves me. And whoever really loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. I will make myself real to him. This is out of the Amplified Classic Translation in John 14, 21. And I also read, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Matthew 6, 33. And I read Jesus' words when praying to God the Father, saying, And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the one true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. John 17, verse 3. Now as I read these verses and many other like verses, I thought to myself, how can this be true? If this is true, how about all my people? For I come from a very ancient civilization. The Indo-Chinese civilization is a very, very ancient civilization on the face of the earth. And I thought they were God-fearing people. They were noble uh, men and women of character, of very high values and integrity. Such were all the stories that I had heard from my parents and my uncles and aunts growing up. Would you believe that I would be introduced to total strangers who would talk to me about just what I had been reading and not believing, not understanding. So I would understand. Next day, I would be introduced to somebody else. Hi, this is Devin Serene. He is new here at this hospital. And this is so-and-so. And as we would talk, somehow the conversation would go to what I had been reading and not fully understanding. And this went on day after day after day after day. And you know, it didn't stop there. As I began to develop an understanding of what the words of Jesus were and what the words of the apostles were, I stopped praying to the Hindu God that I was praying to. And at the same time, I did not pray to Jesus Christ. I just prayed to the one Almighty God to show me the truth. What is the truth? The more I read, the more I understood, the more I believed. And this was further reinforced by many, many supernatural happenings, signs and miracles and wonders, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I will tell you a little bit more about it shortly. You might be wondering when I actually converted and became a Christian. My conversion was not, where one day suddenly 
it happened, but it was slow and steady over a period of several weeks. The more I read, the more I believed. And by the time Christmas rolled in that year, that was the Christmas of 1981, I had such deep joy bubbling inside me. I was like, I was all lit up on the inside. And I knew that I had become a Christian. That was the confirmation of my transformation. And since then, these almost 40 years, I have lived that life as a follower, as a true and faithful follower of Jesus Christ. There have been tremendous supernatural interventions that continued in the months ahead after I moved back to Northern Virginia. There was physical healings in people as a result of my laying on of hands on them and praying with them. There was a person, a patient that I prayed with. I started working at Fairfax Hospital after I moved here. So there was a person that I prayed with at Fairfax Hospital. I was gonna ask her if she would like for me to pray with her. She had terminal cancer and she had basically been told that she was gonna die. And at the same moment, she reached out to me just a second ahead and asked if I would pray with her. And I did, and she got well and went home. Some weeks or months later, I was coming back from a gathering at Church of the Apostles that was called Saturday Night Live. And that was a youth meeting that used to take place. And I stopped at by Pickett Street and Little River Turnpike what used to be Roy Rogers is now Einstein Bagels. I stopped there to eat. The place was empty. A young lady walked in anyway to make matters short. She asked if she could sit across from me. I said, sure, who wants to sit by themselves anyway? Um, and so as she sat, somehow the conversation went to, had she come from that meeting, from that gathering? And she said, yes. And she said, you know, my arm, I forget if she said it was sprained or fractured. And she put out her arm. She said, would you pray for my arm to get healed? And right there in the restaurant, I put my hand on her arm and prayed. And immediately the pain left and she could move her arm. Some more months went by. I was at a church service here in Arlington. Worshipping the presence of the Lord was very strong. The presence of the Holy Spirit was just saturating the place. It was like a, a thick cloud that had descended in that place. And I was a new Christian with a very young Christian faith. And I sensed the presence of the Lord so strong. I said, Lord, I want to touch you. And Jesus appeared by my side. And I reached out and he put out his hand and I took his hand. And I thought to myself, well, I don't want this to end right here. So I said, Lord, I want to walk with you. So he nodded and hand in hand, we walked. And I thought, well, I don't want this to stop this precious, precious moment. And I said, Lord, I want to talk with you. He said, okay. I said, Lord, I love you. I want to follow you all the days of my life. Please don't let me ever get away from you. And he would nod and say, yes. After I ran out of more things to talk to him about, he continued to walk. And from time to time, he would look back and he would go like that. He would send me kisses and he sent me a blessing and he continued to walk and then look back and turn around, send me a kiss and bless me. So let me tell you about how I met my wife, Vicki. When I was attending uh, GW, I had a, a dear friend. She was more like a spiritual mother to me. One day I called her to see if she was available for lunch. She said, yes, I'm supposed to meet with a friend, but you're welcome to come and join us. I said, okay. So we met in Farragut Park in DC, brought our lunches and sat down. And that's when I actually met Vicky. There was such a strong presence. The only way I can describe it, that it was a presence of an angel in that park while we were having lunch. So much so that um, our friend 
as well as Vicky turned back to look and see if there was anybody there. As our relationship grew, we really grew in love for each other, but our love was centered in Christ. Our meetings were centered in Christ. Our conversations were centered in Christ. We were two people that God has so transformed that everything that pertained to our life and would soon pertain to our life together was in Christ, was focused in Christ. We have sought to build a Christian marriage. It's, the Bible says it's a threefold cord. A threefold cord is not easily broken. So when one of us is down, the other can lift up and encourage. We sought to build a Christian home. We had no idea what a Christian home was like because neither of us knew Christ. Based on the Bible, we've sought to build a Christian marriage. We start, started to build a Christian home, have Christian holidays and Christian festivals and functions, and begin to have a Christian family. We had a great need for fellowship because all of our families and friends were from the Hindu community and we could no longer participate with them in the worship of their gods. So need for like-minded friendships led us to Bible teaching and hospitality. We realized that if we were gonna have friends, we were going to be the ones to show ourselves friendly. We have taught the Bible in our home for perhaps 35 or more years. We have traveled overseas, uh, taught the Bible in Colombia, in Chile. We started a television program, the International Hour, where we taught the Bible here in Arlington, Virginia for many years. We've uh, traveled to India, taught at Bible college, taught at tent campaigns and couples retreats in Chile and so on. Partnering with the new Bible college in India led to the opportunity of us being able to travel there in person and teach the students there, both the Bible as well as to worship. So God has been so real, so true, so faithful. How can I, how can my wife Vicki, how can we not follow him fully? Through his word, God initiated relationship with me and wanted me to listen to him and respond in faith. His word is authoritative and his word is intentional. It gives profound hope because God can be trusted to keep his promises. The more I study the Bible and talk to God in prayer, the stronger my faith grows in Jesus Christ. This process has been going on for almost 40 years. He has adopted me as his son. I have adopted him and his ways as my way in life, as my path in life. I have adopted him. I have taken him on as my God, my God not only in this life, but my God through all eternity. Would you not do the same for everything that I am standing here, sitting here before you saying is totally true. I have no reason to tell you anything but the truth. And I can tell you this only from my life. My life, a very ordinary life in whom God has done extraordinary things and continues to through Jesus Christ. And you know, he is true. He is exactly who he says he is. And he will do no less for you as he has done for me. The scriptures tell us in Hebrews chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, the salvation first spoken by the Lord Jesus Christ and then by those who heard him, was confirmed unto us by God bearing witness, both with signs and wonders and diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit. You know, this is the testimony of my life. Is there a reason why this won't be the testimony of your life? All you have to do is to repent from whatever way you have been living, 
and ask Him to become Lord of your life too and to lead your life, to guide you in every area of life. And He will. He will make something beautiful of your life. He will forgive you your sins. He will forgive you your transgressions, your wrongdoing. And He'll make something beautiful from here to forward in your life. Now, prayer softens the human heart and fertilizes it to receive the Word of God. Had the Word of God been shared with me earlier, I would not have been ready for it. But because of people who were praying for me, God began to soften my heart and prepare it to get to know Him. And what an awesome blessing their prayers have resulted in, in my life, in my family, in my home, in my marriage. I want to talk to you in closing how this vision of mine finds fulfillment here at Grace Community Church. The Lord has been speaking to my heart for many years regarding the need for our church to provide spiritual formation and discipleship courses. We have now developed a three-part program that will take in-house teaching and discipleship at Grace to a new level. Starting with fall of this year, our church plans to begin offering Bible college courses specifically designed to equip men and women desiring to go deeper in their knowledge and understanding of the Bible and to those sensing a possible or a definite call to ministry. This program will have three components, education, discipleship or shepherding, and practical ministry experience in the form of an internship. So the first one, education, this piece will involve a classroom component to facilitate growth in faith that will result from a deeper relationship with God through His Word and through guidance of the Holy Spirit. The second component, which is discipleship or shepherding, this piece will provide access to individual mentorship to help each student along his or her personal journey and to help them discern their calling in life. Thirdly, the practical ministry experience in the form of an internship, upon completion of one or more courses, participants will be eligible to apply for opportunities to shadow or work in specific departments of our church if they so desire. So I want to close with a brief prayer. A prayer for you who are watching and listening, as well as a prayer of thanksgiving to God for what He has done in my life. Lord, I thank You that You took me when I was lost and a sinner, living my life according to whichever way I pleased. You began to draw me. You began to open Your Word to me. And when questions arose, You began to provide me answers. You took this very ordinary man, this very ordinary life. And Lord, you have done extraordinary things in my life. I was single. You got me married. You made us a family. You have moved in our life in every way that we can imagine. The challenges that we have been through have been significant but we don't even remember it unless we stop to reflect back and try to recollect those challenges. You have been so true and faithful. And Lord, I bless and worship you. Lord, may you do today in the lives of those that are watching and those that are hearing no less than what you have done for me and in me. I bless your name. God our Father, Jehovah, Yahweh, Adonai, our Lord and Savior, Redeemer and soon returning King, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, and Holy Spirit, my Counselor, Comforter, Teacher, my Leader and my Guide, I bless your name. And Lord, may you grant us to walk with you all the days of our life and to please you 
and not grieve you. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen.